Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemin TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi and welcome everyone and here is Azian News with me Vanessa. Indonesia begins to apply vaccines for age 12 to 17 years old after cases increase. Indonesia starts vaccinating teenagers aged 12 to 17 as stricter restrictions are in place comes into effect when the country sees a spike in cases this month. According to official data, that percentage of overall cases that were under 18 years of age has risen to 12.6% in June compared to 5% in July last year. In a secondary school in capital Jakarta, around 100 students received their first shots. A 16-year-old student says they're happy to receive the shot but urge others to stay put until the situation improved. While President Joko Widodo says the emergency measures running until July 20 are aimed at containing an exponential spike in coronavirus cases that has strained the country's medical system and he also urges public to comply with the rules. <laughs> The measure starts on Saturday, July 3rd, aimed to halve the current number of daily virus cases to below 10,000 and include tighter restrictions on movement and air travel, a ban on restaurant dining and closure of non-essential offices. Volunteer bikers of Indonesia escort ambulances to help fight COVID-19 in the country. A group of volunteer bikers call an ambulance and escort the ambulance through traffic jams to help and take the sick to the hospital or the dead to the graveyard. Sebastian Duyantoro, 24, who is usually a security guard for a private company in Jakarta, decided to take an escort task in the city of Depok because he wants to help his country fight the pandemic. Nowadays, we feel scared of getting infected with COVID-19, honestly, but I always think this is our call of duty from our heart to help. The group can escort ambulances in up to 20 return trips to the hospital or cemetery, all the costs are borne by the bikers. Ambulance driver Endang Firtana, 42, is grateful for the volunteers who make his grim job slightly easier. We don't know how hard it will be if these guys didn't help us and we might be late sending corpses or helping dying patients. Mengirim pasien atau mengantar jenazah mungkin agak telat-telat. The highly infectious Delta variant, first identified in India, where it caused a spike in infections, is spreading in Indonesia and pushing hospitals across Java to the brink. Indonesia's tally of infections stands at 2.26 million, with a death toll of more than 60,000. Police block hundreds of roads in Indonesia aim to reduce soaring infections in the country. Police blocks hundreds of roads and checkpoints across Java, Indonesia's most populous island, and the resort island of Bali, enforcing stricter COVID-19 restrictions in a bid to curb the spread of infections. The world's fourth most populous country has seen records of new infections with 25,830 cases and a record 539 deaths. Restrictions on the islands of Java and Bali, ranging from stricter travel checks to bans on dining in restaurants and outdoor sports and closure of non-essential workplaces, 
and this will last until July 20, but may be extended if necessary until lower daily infection 10,000. More than 20,000 officers were deployed to help curb the spread by directing people to stay at home. The hell infectious Delta variant, first identified in India where it caused a spike in infections, is spreading in Indonesia and pushing hospitals across Java to the brink. Indonesia's inoculation campaign has covered just 7.6% of a target of 181. million people by January. Philippine President honors soldiers killed in military plane crash. Philippines President Rodrigo Duterte pays tribute to soldiers who died in the country's worst military accident. More than 50 people, including civilians, were killed when an Air Force plane that overshot a runway crashed. The Defense Ministry says Duterte flee to a military camp in the southern city of Zamboanga, where the dead and dozens of injured were brought following the crash of a transport plane was in good condition. Philippine authorities ordered an investigation into the crash. Again, I commiserate with you. I am as sorrowful as you. The C-130 aircraft was carrying recently graduated troops bound for counterinsurgency operations in the south and had been trying to land on Hollow Island before it crashed and burst into flames. The Defense Ministry says the plane with 96 passengers, the death toll from the crash, rose to 52, including three civilians, after two of 49 injured soldiers succumbed to their injuries on Monday. Leaked memo heightens silence concern about Sinovac vaccine efficacy. Bangkok residents expresses concerns and uncertainties towards the vaccines available in Thailand after a leaked health ministry document prompted calls in the country for medical staff inoculated against COVID-19 to be given a booster shot of an mRNA vaccine. The internal memo, which includes various opinions, was reported by local media and shared widely on social media. It was confirmed by Thai Health Minister Anutin Chanvirakul as being authentic. He also says the comment on the booster shot was in an opinion and there was an expert panel to set vaccine policy. The leaked memo include a comment from an unnamed official who recommended authorities do not give a booster shot of Pfizer-BioNTech's vaccine to frontline health workers and that such a move could dent public confidence in Sinovac Biotech's vaccine. Chairman of Tonburi Healthcare Group, Boon Vanasin says there are two five medical staff at the hospital who were infected with COVID-19, of which two were admitted to intensive care. Talent has procured 20 million doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine for future delivery and will this month receive 1.5 million doses donated by the United States. High school students in Vietnam taking exams amid spike COVID-19 cases. Thousands of Vietnamese high school students gather at Hanoi examination centers amid rising COVID-19 infections in the country. The high school exams considered to be decisive with results determining the universities in which students can enroll and ultimately their future. In Hanoi, the police put up barriers and directed traffic by the 181 examination centers with parents waiting outside. The country reports 677 new cases after recording more than 1,000 new coronavirus cases for a second successive day. The Southern Economic Hub, Ho Chi Minh City, is the epicenter of the current coronavirus outbreak, which has lasted more than two months, but students and parents in the capital Hanoi say they are also worried about potential risks. 
A parent waiting outside an exam center says she worries about students from different schools mixing during the exam without knowing about their potential exposure to the virus. Vietnam has reported 102 deaths and 22,741 infections. The Japanese government declares the fourth state of emergency after the Delta variant spreads in Tokyo. Japanese Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says the highly infectious Delta COVID-19 variant was spreading in Tokyo, leading the central government to declare a fourth coronavirus state of emergency over the Olympic host city. Japan's top health advisor, Shigeru Omi, also joins the televised news conference with Suga, says the medical system would likely come under pressure if no additional steps were taken. The emergency comes just two weeks before the Tokyo Olympic opening, but Suga reassured that Olympic athletes are being tested every day upon arrival to prevent the virus from spreading further in Japan. The capital announced 896 new daily infections. The newest state of emergency will cover Tokyo, Okinawa Prefecture, until August 22 days before the scheduled begin on the Tokyo Paralympics. Areas neighboring Tokyo where several Olympic events that are due to take place, such as Chiba and Kanagawa prefectures, are set to remain under quasi-emergency until August 22. Vaccines from Israel arrive in South Korea to prevent COVID-19 in the country. South Korea received 700,000 doses of Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine from Israel under a swap arrangement along with a separate shipment of 627,000 directly purchased doses. The delivery came after the country reported its second highest number of daily new COVID-19 infections. Authority says some of the new supply will be sent to Greater Seoul for inoculation programs due to start on July 13. Improved vaccination levels have helped lower South Korea's mortality rate to 1.25% and the number of severe cases to 155 down significantly from 1.41% and 3,011 cases reported during the previous peak in late December. The country reported a total of 162,753 infections and 2,033 deaths during the pandemic. South Korea reports highest daily COVID-19 since late December. Prime Minister Kim Bo Kyum in a COVID-19 response meeting said South Korea reports more than 1,200 new coronavirus cases in the past 24 hours, the highest daily count since late December. Kim says social distancing measures will be extended for the next few days and officials will consider whether to toughen an existing rules to battle a fourth wave of the pandemic fueled by the highly contagious Delta variant. The virus is spreading rapidly among unvaccinated people in their 20s and 30s and advising people to get tested preemptively. Around 30% of the country's population of 52 million people have received at least one dose of COVID-19 vaccine. The highest ever daily case load reported by South Korea was 1,240, reported on December 25, when the country was experiencing a third wave of the pandemic. Malaysians waved the white flag in appeal for help in strict actions lockdown. Residents wave flags on wood in windows to show symbols to call for help amid strict lockdown measures due to the increase in coronavirus cases in Petaling Jaya in state of Selangor, Malaysia. The white flag movement gained momentum on social media last week after stories of low-income families struggling financially, some surviving on one meal a day, appeared in the local news. Hadija Niamat said when they waved the white flag in front of their house, after a few minutes, neighbors came with offerings of rice and supplies.
Masuk yang besar, pas yang besar. Tak sampai berapa minit. I put up a large white flag, and not even a few minutes after, some neighbors came with rice and things. I think it will be outsiders who will come to help, like wealthy people or ministers or important people. If someone puts up a white flag, of course, we need to be concerned. I was stunned. Local lawmakers subsequently tore up at Hadija's store to distribute foods and essentials to residents. The Southeast Asian country has been under nationwide lockdown since June 1st to rein in a surge of COVID-19 infections. The SOS signal is a way for affected families to appeal for food, work or other essentials as many as businesses remain closed and joblessness rises during the pandemic. People have also provided information to local food banks where the distress signals have been displayed. Malaysia has reported more than 785,000 cases of COVID-19, the third highest tally in Southeast Asia, and has been in lockdown since June 1st. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a lovely day.